In about eight minutes, you're going to see why this underrated little box from Lenovo is one of the best and yet most frustrating devices you've probably never heard of, especially when it comes to using it in a home lab environment. And yes, I know it looks exactly like a Mac Studio, so let's get that out of the way. But that's where the similarities end. Because whilst Apple is charging you three grand for something you can't even upgrade, this thing lets you run proper virtualization workloads for half the price. The device here is a Lenovo ThinkCenter Neo Ultra. And yes, it absolutely looks like a Mac Studio, I know. Same general shape, same sort of minimal design language, and it's even positioned similarly in Lenovo's lineup. The unit that Lenovo sent out came with an Intel i7-14700. That's the full fat desktop CPU, not some mobile chip. And it's got 28 cores. Eight of those cores are P cores with hyper threading. So that gives me a total of 16. And then you get 12 E cores. Despite its size, they've also managed to cram in an RTX 4060 desktop graphics card with eight gig of RAM. And speaking of RAM, the unit here came with 32 gig of DDR5 memory in a single slot configuration. It's a bit of a weird choice if you ask me, but at least that gives us space to upgrade it down the line. Storage wise, it came with a standard Gen 4 512 gig NVMe by Samsung. And the thing is, Lenovo have managed to cram all of that power into a small 3.6 litre chassis that you can genuinely pick up with one hand. Now, as amazing as it is being able to have all that power sitting on your desk and not need a big case, there are some downsides to this too as you can probably imagine. I ended up watching quite a few reviews of this online before reaching out to Lenovo and asking for a review unit. See, there's not really much info out there about this unit, and I can't understand why if I'm being honest with you. I initially came across the Think Center Neo Ultra after watching one of my favorite YouTubers, Der Bauer, talk about it. He said he was looking for a small, portable, yet powerful device to take it with him to Computex for editing. And that got me curious. See, the few videos that are out there about this device focus primarily on content creation and gaming, which this thing absolutely excels at. But it's got the specs to match, so I'm not surprised. But I wanted to see what happens when you actually push it with proper virtualization workloads. I wanted to see how you could handle my usual slew of Docker images and multiple VMs. Now, whilst Docker containers are one thing, considering they're meant to be lightweight and efficient, it also handled VMs just fine without breaking a sweat. I ended up running Fedora 42 on it. I tested Arch. I even tested Bazite. I also spun up my usual Docker containers, such as Open Web UI, Uptime Kuma, Portana, and even a Minecraft Bedrock server. By the way, I have a dedicated video on how you can set up your own Minecraft server for free and play with your friends across the internet. The link is below the like button. And also, feel free to subscribe if you're enjoying this content. Now, let me show you the guts of the Lenovo. And right from the bat, it's nothing fancy, which is a bit of a shame. Getting inside this thing is really simple. Four screws on the bottom and you're in. Honestly, I wish more manufacturers would do that and make it that simple. Once you've lifted the bottom cover, you'll be presented with two upgradable RAM slots and two M.2 slots. And as you can see, everything's easily accessible. You could easily populate this with a set of 96 gig of RAM and two four terabyte NVMe drives in RAID 0 if you're there. The one thing I'd love to have seen to make it a truly underrated device for home lab enthusiasts are two things. A second Ethernet port on the device, which we'll get to shortly, possibly a two and a half gig port or even a 10 gig port, and that's more wishful thinking, and a third or even a fourth NVMe drive slot. I know the CPU is more than capable of that. It would be the ultimate home lab sleeper in my opinion, and it could handle everything you throw at it and more. It would open up so many more possibilities, but I also understand why they did what they did. Now the GPU situation is where it gets a bit more complicated. Yes, it's a proper desktop RTX 4060, which is brilliant for things like hardware transcoding in Plex, or if you want to dabble with AI workloads, but it's not user upgradable. Well, you can replace it, but only for the exact same card because it is a proprietary 4060. It's a custom form factor that's integrated into the cooling system. So you're stuck with what you've bought. Not that a 4060 is bad by any stretch, but as I said, it's been running with no issues for me and I've been editing videos on it just fine and transcoding and exporting works really, really well. I've even managed to play some games on it with decent frame rates, something I haven't been able to do in a very long time. Would I love to see if there was a bit more of a powerful option, like a 4070 or a 4080? Sure, but considering the form factor, I think the 4060 is bang on. Now, I appreciate that might be a bit harsh on this machine as I'm trying to shoehorn it into a niche that it's not designed for. I completely understand that, but I was just a little bit curious as to what else I could do with it rather than just give you a very boring and generic review. I genuinely love this device. Though there is something I do need to point out, which regardless of the environment it's in is a mission for me, and that's Thunderbolt. There is no Thunderbolt port. In 2025 on a machine that's clearly positioned as a Mac Studio alternative, the lack of a Thunderbolt 4 is a weird omission. See, I'd love it if there was a Thunderbolt 4 or even a Thunderbolt 5 port on this instead of all those display outputs. 
It's great that they support so many external displays, don't get me wrong, especially if you want to look like one of those TikTok Forex traders, but the lack of a Thunderbolt is genuinely weird. The rest of the ports are pretty straightforward, very much in line with the target audience for this device. You get USB-C port on the front with two USB 3s and a headphone mic combo. You also get a few more USBs on the back along with an Ethernet port that I mentioned earlier and the many, many display connectors giving you all the ports you need to connect various devices. And last but not least, and for me this is a massive plus, the power supply unit is built into the device. I can't tell you how nice it is just being able to plug in a power cable without having a massive power brick attached to it. That is a massive, massive win for me. Now, given that all the power and the size of the device, it is actually something that you can have sitting on your desk. It's not going to be whisper quiet by any stretch, but nor is it unbearably loud. It is in that in-between stage. The fan is definitely audible in a quiet home office when you're working, but pop out into a normal office environment where you have people and general background noises and this thing is virtually silent. The fans do ramp up when you're pushing it hard with multiple VMs or when you're rendering a video or even doing some light gaming, but the software does a good job to drop the fans the second the task is over. Now, I haven't got any testing equipment to give you real decibel numbers, but I had it sitting on my desk the whole time and I had no issues with it whatsoever. So having had the device for a while now, I can tell you what it's like living with it. For home lab work, it's been absolutely brilliant. It's handled everything I've thrown at it without any issues. It just sits there and gets on with the job. Power consumption has been relatively reasonable. Under normal loads, it's about 50 to 80 watts. And even when I'm pushing it hard with multiple VMs, it rarely goes above 150 watts. That's proper efficient for the performance you get. Keep in mind though that the CPU does ramp down to 65 watts after a period of sustained boost. The build quality of this device is also spot on. It feels like a proper piece of kit and not some plastic mini PC. The all metal construction means it dissipates heat well and it feels substantial without being heavy. All in, I think this is something much more useful and versatile than a Mac Studio. It's a proper home lab workhorse that doesn't look like it belongs in a server room. The lack of Thunderbolt is genuinely perplexing and you're stuck with the GPU you buy. But for home lab work, this thing is just enough. So if you've enjoyed this deep dive into home lab hardware, then don't forget to subscribe and watch some of my other content where I go over budget friendly home lab options, such as in this video here.